But you're pretty close. And you also have to be careful because you can accidentally hit someone when you do that. Okay. This guy has no staff, meaning he has no value to us as a human. Get out of here. I don't care. Uh, pull up your map. You are very close. Um, it is like directly north of you. There. So I wonder if it's down here or if it's up the hill. Looked to me like it was down here. Okay. Oh, maybe this is it. I bet I bet you anything this is it. So this is what the game or what people online recommend in terms of progressing progression to level up as you go. Yes. Is it coastal cave? Is that what it is? Yes. Okay. And we need to touch grace here. So we're going to try not to look much up for progressing. Um, but what is going on here? What the heck? What? Maybe you move the controller funny and that was <clears> actually <throat> still on. Okay. We're going to try not to look up much for like progressing, but we need to know sometimes where to head in general so that we can actually play the game. I can't see anything. Well, these are pretty low level creatures because I fought some of them out in the open. So you cheated? What, how would I have cheated by encountering them out in the open? Because you fought these creatures before. You're right. I'm sorry. This reminds me of the catacombs. I hate the catacombs. No, no, no. no the area I hated in the first Dark Souls is... Is that a land octopus ovary? Ew. <laughs> I hate the area... Um... Here it is. Whoa! Demi... Wait! Demi Lovato! No, there's no metal spoons here. <laughs> there's two of them? Yeah. You should. You better go and start hurting the first one. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, at least we know where we're going now. Like, we have a, we have an idea. Could I try, because you've been playing for a while, could I try and redeem myself from that other boss and just see what I can do here? No. Just for a second. No. I will probably die. You want to be Demi Lovato here? It annoys me actively, by the way. I don't care when people are better at me than anything. Okay. But I will say it does annoy me with Dark Souls how I feel like you are actively better at these games at this point than me. You feel like I'm better at Dark Souls than yes, you? Yes, I do. How? Because I feel like you are able to like patiently fight the boss and beat I... them usually when we fight one. I'm going to be honest with you. This is probably the first time in my entire life I've ever heard anyone call me more patient than them. I have no patience. I'm I also angry, have zero. <laughs> I'm a very angry person. I'm also a very angry person. <laughs> okay, so there's a path this way. There's a pass this way? No. That's actually with the first boss in the game, and that's why we need to get back there. Oh, got it. He gives you the pass. I was going to ask you, by the way, this I can just keep this in the recording, it doesn't matter. On Friday when you come over after work, would you be able to stay an hour or two later than you normally do, just so we could try and make actual more progress on this? Like, instead of leaving at 6, leave at like 7 or 7.30 or something? Or do you think that would work? Or would that not work for your dinner thing? Why are you looking at me like that? Well, what kind of an outrageous request was that? Well, I don't know. It was just like a request. I'm you sorry. actually want me to hang out with you? Yeah, to play a game. You just want me. I for, want like, you. my footage. No, I just want you. You want my feet pics. Not pics. My feet. Uh, yeah. Okay. Where the heck am I? I don't know. I think that would be fine. Okay. Only if we can play all three Elden Ring... Ghostbusters and Kingdom Hearts back to back. I don't want to start Kingdom Hearts yet. I want to beat Kingdom Hearts Reaching the Memories. I really just don't want to play it. <laughs> I, know. I want to play Brotherhood. If the, ste if the steel book. What? If the story was not as crucial to the franchise, I would be totally fine skipping it. Oh no! What are those? I only went this way to see if there's like an item or something important. Do you feel like an idiot? No, because I got cave moss. Do you feel like an idiot because no. you didn't get cave moss? No, I don't feel like an idiot. Moron. Oh, whoa. Hey, let's summon him. Old Knight Esteban. I feel like we look like a pussy if we have I, to summon this early. I don't care. I just like summoning the What, NPCs. you just want to summon the NPC to see what I like, it looks like? I like summoning NPCs for bosses. I find it fun. It can be fun, but I don't want to summon every single we don't, time. We don't have to. We see a summon sign. We don't have to. That's all I was saying. We can just summon Old Knight Esteban, and that's want? it. 
only the whole game? Yeah, we'll summon... I'm not saying that either. No, we'll we'll summon, like, one every now and then. Did we summon, uh, in Demon Souls? We summon once. Only once? And then it turned into, like, a big argument. Wait, really? Yeah, didn't you get mad at me? No, we, we got mad at each other. <laughs> no, you got mad at me, because I just said, like, I feel like it's annoying when people summon for every boss. I don't remember. Because a lot of it got, like, cut out. Did it, actually? I think so, yeah. Oh. Because I remember you cut through it, and then we, like, talked over it, saying, like, we were both dicks. <laughs> well, I mean, both perspectives have a point on that discussion. Right. Because the thing is, if you just summon for every single boss, you don't try anything by yourself without doing that, and you just make the NPC do it, or a lot of it. Right. I feel like you're also short crediting yourself because you're not really even trying. Right. But I feel like it's a mechanic that's in the game for a reason, and there is nothing wrong with using that mechanic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, personally, I just find it fun to be like, oh, there's a cool guy helping me. That's cool. Right. I mean, also, like, one of the main things in these uh, types of games was... <laughs> was that? Was, like, co-op. Right. So, I don't know, that's why, you know, especially in, like, Dark Souls, the NPCs, I feel like, are really interesting. Like, Solaire, for example. I can't move. Oh, no! Our table. <laughs> it's broken! <Okay. laughs> Wait, we got one of them. Yeah, because, like, Esteban used, like, a really cool move. <laughs> Esteban! Wait, pick up your souls behind you. Where are they? Right there. Oh, okay, thank you. Nice. Whoa, dude, you got, like, almost 2,000 souls there. I was helping out Esteban. Thank you. <laughs> His family's been through enough. Well, I feel like this is Esteban from Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. No, not a character as Chad like as that. See, this is the thing. We summoned, and I'm not saying it's not fair. But he is helping you. Well, he did a lot of it. He yeah. did a lot of No, I, I get it. I know. Do you see what I'm... I know, and that's why I'm saying, like, maybe every now and then we'll summon someone. I have no problem... Just for fun. I have no problem doing it sometimes. Like, I don't have, like, the idea or, like, the concept in my head that I'm, like, the Dark Souls master. Right. Or anything, or, you know, need to do everything by myself. All I was trying to say was, if we did that every single time... Right. Then there's... Is there anything a... else in the boss room? I don't think so. What about could... those to your right? I thought this was nothing, because I walked over and it didn't let me do anything. Oh, I guess now it is? Oh. Okay. Who's this guy? Well, I don't know. Maybe we can wait, like, a few more bosses before we summon again. I mean, we can always do it, too, if we just, like, are getting reamed. Right. That's fine. You know, like, it's not really a big deal. Um... You know what part of it is? Part of it is, like, when... Like, it's different if it's just you. But part mm -hmm. of it, too, is I don't like giving people the the ability to criticize me and say, I don't know what I'm talking about because I'm not good at the game because I didn't do this, this, or this. Do you get what I'm saying? Right. Like, I know some people will do that anyway, but I don't like giving people an easy pass to dismiss what I'm saying or thinking because I played the game a certain way. Or whatever. Right. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it makes sense. I'm not saying, like, oh, you should, like, cower in fear of those people. I'm just saying I don't like letting people be able to do that. What if you just told them to, uh... Touch grace? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, generally, that's... So, can you get out? Because there was always a teleporter in the boss room. At least in the last ones we've done. That brought you back to the... To grace. Well, there's got to be something over here, doesn't there? This could just be the area to get from the El the grace point to the boss. That no. was a tough sentence. No, that was back there. Well, isn't this, this where is you came from, though? I thought that this was... Because I thought this was where you came from, and then really? this was the boss gate. Yeah. I thought that was the boss gate. No, because the guy was over here. Oh, okay. So and that's then... what. So never mind. That's why I couldn't tell. Yeah, Got I it. think. Yeah, I don't think we came from this way. So that in my head we came from this way. That was the problem. In my head. 
I see. What was that tree over there? Months. That was just the way out. It's like a teleporter. Oh, so yeah, that's what I was talking about. Right, I know, but I wanted to look and see what's here. Got it. Instead of leaving. Like the path after the boss. Right. If there was anything there. Oh, hey, look at this. Oh, jeez! Wow. All right. You know what? Let's just go back and level up. <laughs> and we'll come in here. So I actually had something interesting I was wanting to like talk about for a little bit. Okay. So, I've been reading about the, uh, this, this is a historical thing. Oh, there's no, there, there's nothing here for her Grace. I've been reading about uh, World War One actually, and I've specifically been reading recently about the end of World War One. So, like after Germany accepted the Allies' armistice request. We never should have given them one. And then the post-treaty like treaty discussion points, right? Right. So I've been reading about that stuff, which I know sounds kind of boring, but I found it like fascinating. I don't find it boring. Um, but as I was reading this, I was kind of like... One, I kind of lost even more respect for like Woodrow Wilson with a lot of things, because he... Uh, went back on a lot of his word. Uh, and I'll get into that more. But but I also kind of was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever read about in my entire life. <laughs> because if you read about the post-World War uh, One stuff, it's very easy to see why Mr. A.H. and... Can we say Mussolini's name on YouTube? Yeah. Why Mussolini's... Why Mussolini even came into power in the first place, and it's because a lot of the Allies m screwed up the stuff after World War One. Like they, because Woodrow Wilson going into the peace talks, he he was preaching this whole thing of like, oh well, we gotta, we don't want to like overkill them because then that'll just lead them to World War Two, basically. Right. You know, it'll just piss them off. Like we don't want to do that. And then you had, like, the French under Clemenceau and David uh, Lloyd Duke? George. Oh. Not right. David Duke. <laughs> David Lloyd George of Britain were basically, like, kind of pissed off at Germany, right? And I don't blame them because the two countries lost, like, 8 million people in this war mm -hmm. collectively. So, they're, like, they're pretty pissed off. But they were coming into this, like, these peace talks with, like, this mindset of... Not like not. Let's just have peace. It's we're making you pay for what you did to us. And Woodrow Wilson came into this whole mindset of, well, well, wait a minute here. We can't do that. You're talking about the Treaty of Versailles. Yeah, yeah. Oh, essentially, Woodrow Wilson had like acted like they should not do that. And didn't they say like, if you won't do it, we'll get someone else who will? Was that to Wilson or was that to someone else? It wasn't mm -hmm. Churchill. Uh, no, Churchill I, was more. Too I don't know who they. Well, that was they. They said that type of stuff to, because then you had like Italy randomly in this too, which I'll get into that more later. But then you had like Japan in there and like all these countries that were threatening to back out because that's the other funny thing about this whole treaty is at the at the treaty everyone just basically wanted land, right? So it turned it turned into like less of a well, let's just have a treaty, and more into. Well, Germany has all this fun land, and the French were like, well, I want this land called the Sars land, which basically had a bunch of, like, iron in it and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the Japanese wanted this land of Shang or Shantung. Didn't really like how you said Japanese there. Sorry. <laughs> they wanted this land, which is in China, but it was this region that the Germans had taken over, and it was a German colony. And during the war, Japan had actually attacked this region. And uh, Japan was like, well, but we already own this region. We should just have it. And the Chinese were like, yeah, but that's part of China. Why do you get that land? And then actually the al funny story that the allies sided with China or sorry, sorry, sided with Japan and not China and gave the land to, to Japan. Mm -hmm. Which actually caused, on the same day they did that, a bunch of ch angry Chinese students assembled in Tiananmen Square. This is not the famous Tiananmen Square, but they, well, it mm -hmm. is, but not what the famous Tiananmen Square. Sorry. 
What they assembled in the same square and... What's the same square as what? Uh, nothing. Nothing else happened there. Okay. But good. they assembled in the square and actually were protesting. Well, these people went on to... This is actually the start of the Chinese Communist Party. Because the Allies made them appear weak. Because the Chinese government was weak at the point. Mm -hmm. It was like a brand new Chinese Republic. And they basically had no power at all. So they were kind of pissed off at this. Well, this kind of was the start of the Chinese Communist Party coming to power mm -hmm. because they were pissed off at their own government. Um, but anyways, you had like all these like countries wanting all this land, and then it and then you had the French under Clemenceau saying, "Well, the the Germans should pay two hundred billion dollars to us to pay for all the civilian damages and stuff like their homes and stuff that you destroyed." Well, that was dumb. And the British wanted 120 billion, and then Woodrow Wilson came in and asked for 30. <laughs> so right. it's kind of like, and then the Germans were like, "Well, we can't pay for all this. Like, what a stupid treaty offer." Right. But then the funny thing is, then, and I feel like I'm kind of rambling here. But... No, no, no. I I am listening. I'm just. I was also looking around because I kind of know the direction of where to go next, and I didn't want to leave okay. stuff here. Uh, if I was, you know, going to miss something important. But then it like, but then the Germans, because another area of the peace treaty was they said, well, the Rhineland region should be occupied for 15 years by the allies, which was a very important land area for Germany. And Germany was kind of like, what? Like, what are you doing here? Well, what was funny is the French, the Allies, had 600,000 troops in that area already. And they ordered Marshal Falk, who was the Allies, like, general. Uh -huh. they, ordered, they ordered him, get ready to march towards Berlin. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> to basically be like, oh, well, yeah, you want to accept this peace treaty? And then they're like, well, this is unfair. Right. Like, this is going to cripple... Like, you're basically... Basically, what this peace treaty did was it got rid of one-tenth of German land. Mm -hmm. It got rid of one-eighth of the German population. Mm -hmm. It destroyed their economy because up until a couple of years ago, Germany was still paying from for this. Did you know that? For World War One? Yeah. It was what? literally like ten <clears throat> years ago, Germany finally paid off their debts from World War One. You know what I don't understand about that? After World War Two and historians said, Yeah, you caused this to Europe, did Europe still not believe that? Like, because historians have been saying Europe helped cause World War Two. Right. By the Treaty of Versailles. Yeah. They've been saying that for the last thirty years openly. Yeah. Right. At minimum, since like the eighties. Mm-hmm. And it's been an accepted narrative. Like, it's not like, you're a fringe lunatic for saying that. It's like, no, pretty much everyone can agree that Europe helped cause... Yeah, because they, like, overkilled Germany. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, why would you even still make them pay that after World War II? I don't know. Why would you just a, say, oh, yeah, we fucked up here, too? It was a debt that they agreed to, so I guess they were obligated to. I don't know. Yeah, but, like, everybody involved in the debt probably should have just said, like, we never should have done that. Right. Let's get rid of that. Well, and also what kind of made me laugh during this all is because you had... So basically, Wilson, his main thing was he wanted to make the League of Nations, which was like an early thing for the NATO. But that was like his big thing. Like, let's have a, let's have a conglomerate of countries that work together towards peace, right? Mm -hmm. So in his, these talks, that was what he was... That was his central push, was we need to have peace, and we need to create a conglomerate of countries for peace. Well, like a Justice League, but lame. Exactly. Well, what what ended up being about this is then it ended up just creating a lot of bureaucratic discussions because then they're like, well, let's create the Council of Ten, and they had like this two month discussion on ratifications on the covenant of the Council of Ten, which was basically ten countries that were discussing the peace treaty. Right. And this was already two months after Germany started the armistice. So, like, Germany's just sitting over here like, what are you guys doing? Right. And, the, and then... This guy seems crabby. And, and then they're like, well, the, the Council of Ten is too many countries to discuss this thing. So then they created the Council of Four, 
which was basically U.S., uh, France, Britain, and uh, Italy. Okay. Which were basically like, well, these are the four biggest countries here. But then they had to then they had to discuss all these ratification codes for this. So then it, you're talking April before they even discussed the Treaty of Versailles, huh. and November of 1918 is when Germany accepted the armistice. So we're talking like five months of them just, just like there. talking about things. So it's like already from this like thing, it's just like the dumbest thing ever because it's like just talk about the treaty here. Yeah, but. Anyways, yeah, the Treaty of Versailles, it just kind of overkilled them. And what it didn't even make, what made even less sense was with Italy, there was all these, like, treaties, like, secret treaties that Britain and France promised, like, Italy to get them involved in the war in the first place. And one of them was they were like, well, well, if you get involved with us, we will give you this area called the Fayoum. Which was basically an area next to Italy uh-huh. that had like a really big port that they wanted. So Italy was like, okay, well, that was before Woodrow Wilson even got involved in this. Uh-huh. So when they were talking about the peace treaty. I was making sure there was no item. Oh, oh okay. there's like a secret pass there. Mm-hmm. So when Woodrow Wilson got <laughs> into these peace discussions, he's like, well, I didn't agree to this. We're going to go get the bonfire, then come back up and then okay. go over there. Sounds good. Just so you don't think I'm a lunatic here. Well, then what, what ended up happening was Italy, they basically were like, yeah, we're not going to give you this land because the newly formed Yugoslavia area wanted the land, too. And so they were just going to give it to them? Well, they basically said, we'll just let you two figure out who gets the land. What? <laughs> I know. It's like this is like the dumbest thing you could ever do, for example, and that, which ended up just creating them to fight over that land. Well, three years after the Treaty of Versailles, guess who comes into power in Italy? Mussolini. Mussolini. Yeah, Mussolini. What's what's his big thing? He's pissed off that he got gypped out of all this land. You can't say gypped anymore now. That's a racist thing. Oh, sorry. He's pissed off he got ripped off from all this land because Italy was promised all this stuff. You know what's sad to me? How quick you were to accept me telling you that was a racist I mean, I figured, like, they don't like the word gypsy, so I'm like, maybe it's something like that. That is what it is. Okay. But it's like... I don't know. It's just like, it seems like everything they did just kind of pissed off everyone else. Right. And then it's like, you've already pissed off Italy, which gave Mussolini the ability to come into power and be pissed off. So no wonder in World War II he's ger- he's joining Germany because he hates the Allies. Right. <clears throat> um, and then what's even bigger is all the land that Germany lost. Well, in World War II under Mr. A.H., the Allies actually spread a lot of fear about him wanting to take over the world, you know? Right, A.H.? Yeah. Which, first of all, is like the biggest lie ever, because he, he could have cared less about taking over the world. There's early writings of him basically laughing at, like... Because that was one of the big things with Britain, was they were saying, like, well, he wants all these African colonies. And he's kind of like, no, I don't. Right. Because the British owned a lot of these African colonies. He could have cared less about Africa. Wow, that's not very base. Well, I know, but I'm saying he didn't want that. But British Brit- Britain was spreading like these things. Well, it's really just because they don't want to lose their land. There's also things of him saying... There's actual things of him uh, writing about allying with Britain when they attacked the United States. Oh. And it's not even because he wanted the United States. It's because Mr. H wanted to take over the United States because he knew they were a threat. And his, his plan was actually give, letting Britain have the United States. Oh. Like, there's actual plans of him of saying, well, let's ally with Britain because they're the probably the best European country we could help that could help us out. And we'll just let them have the United States. Like, he didn't even want this. Well, do you want to know what he wanted? Why did he attack countries like Austria? Free health care. Yes. Why did he attack countries like Poland? Why did, he, why did he want part of Russia? It's because he wanted this Third Reich. Well, what is a Third Reich? It's he wanted this big area for German, 
for German people, right? Uh -huh. Because he felt Germany was like the best race ever. So he's like, well, we need to create this big whole, you know, land for Germany. I messed up. Well, that guy's like pickaxe is like the most intense things ever. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Well, didn't he know that Britain wasn't really interested in getting back America at that point? I mean, like, I'm not saying they just say no to Right. Me, I think he, his thought was... Well, if we take over all these other countries, Britain will just let us. Or, you know what I mean? They'll help us. Right, but Britain and America were... Right, they were friends. So it's like, well, but what are you doing? <laughs> right. So, I mean, because the thing with Austria is that's the other thing in World War One. At the end of World War One, Austria was made as a country, but it was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Well, the funny thing is, most of the people in Austria, or what we would call Austria now, they were all German. Mm -hmm. And H and A.H. knew that. Mm -hmm. So to him, it was, these are German people anyways. That is German land. Why, ah. why is this a new country? We need to take this back for us, right? Right. We need to take back Poland, because that's German land. We need to take back part of Russia, because that's German land. You know, the reason why he wanted the United States is, one, because it was a threat. Two, he was actually pissed off at the United States because there was German people in the United States. Oh, how dare they? So he, so his his mindset was, oh my gosh. was, we need to bring all the German people back to Germany, right? And right. create, like, one big master country kind of a thing. Right. Well, what are the origins of this? From World War One, when the Allies basically split up German Germany. Right. So he's like pissed off that they lost all this land. And he's also, like, well, did, we need to take back all this land. Also, weren't there Germans that immigrated to America because of this? Yes. Like they literally left Germany because Germany was such a mess after World War One. Yes. I. Yes. And you know, and if and if you take out part of Russia and stuff, you know, you need to you need to get industry, you need to get land, right? Right. You need to have all this land for all these German people to emigrate back to Germany. Like it's I don't know, my thing is like he didn't care about world domination. At that point. Right. He cared about we need a big we need the German Empire back. Right. And the German like we need the Third Reich. Well what was the second Reich? Kaiser Wilhelm II in World War One, when he tried to take over a bunch of territory. Just die, please. Oh, no. So... We've got Goldman the Dung Flinger! <laughs> I know. So, I don't know. I just find it... Why can't you backstab these guys? I don't know, because he's got, like, 3,000 pounds of his own, like, boogers on his back. I don't <laughs> okay. know. Okay. So, anyways, I find this interesting. It's like, there's so much propaganda around... A.H. saying, like, well, he's like this evil guy. I mean, he was. He was evil. Of, like, like they, he wants to destroy everyone. It's like, no, he doesn't. They misrepresented his original intentions until his until his intentions became the ones that they said they would be. Yeah, because, like, the other thing is, you, if you look at the war in general, you can kind of go, why did he even attack Russia? Right. Him and Russia signed a peace treaty. Why would he even attack Russia in the first place? Right, but what a lot of people ignore with that, too, I'm sure you won't, but a lot of people also ignore that Nazism and Communism were actually incompatible. Right. They were not compatible uh, ideologies that somehow worked together. Right. They just weren't. So a lot of people think they were, mm -hmm, and they think, not. like, oh, they could be, like, really, like, really close friends. It's like, no. <laughs> no, that's... They couldn't, right. actually. Right. But, like, the reason he attacked Russia is because that entire region east of the Ural Mountains, to him, that's Germany. That's land that we lost. I'm not talking, like, Siberia. But we're talking, like, the area, like, the western part of Russia. Go! That's Sorry. all, that's just part of Germany. Right. So you're like, well, why did he even attack Russia in the first place during the war? Because to him, it's like, well, let's take back our land. Uh -huh. So he... Yes, he got greedy, but that's why he wanted it in the first place. Right, it was because they lost so much of it in the past. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know, to me it's like, to me it's just fascinating connecting the dots, where it's kind of like, you know, when I read about this, I go, you know, Clemenceau, Lloyd George, Wilson, 
you guys caused this. Right. Like, I'm not saying Germany was, like, completely on that fault from World War One. No, everybody was at fault over right. World War One. It was more over, you know, peace. Oh. Tr- Whoa, stone what now? <laughs> yeah, and I'm not saying, like, they weren't at fault and they shouldn't have been punished because they were doing a- atrocious war crimes in World War One. Absolutely. I am going to get rocked here, by the way. But I kind of think, like, they just wanted to bleed them dry. And that caused... And it's like, well, now I, I know why Mussolini got in charge. I know why Mr. H was able to rally the entire German people. Not everyone. Well, this a lot is of also, people didn't like him. But. This is also why it's important, because understanding is not the same as endorsing. Right. I'd love it if you try this. Okay. Do you know how to get there from watching me? I can try. So I kind of just have to run by those yeah. guys. Yeah. And try and get to the boss. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, no. We should have done the last stake of America. Because I think they were going there. So I need to go back to America? No. Um, So, you're just going to want to book it past all these guys. Faster than Booker T. Washington on a Tuesday afternoon. that's pretty fast. So just go to your right, and you can kind of, like, run down down here. And then go that way. No, I agree. I mean, understanding is not endorsement. That's the funniest thing to me with the, um... Oh, this is ridiculous. Really? You have to call it back? Yes, guys. Yeah, of course. Um... Well, it's just interesting connecting all the dots. Right, and I just find it funny how people will act like it's bad to understand the history. Right. Because there are people who do. It's like, oh, you study Mr. H? You must be a Yahtzee. It's like, no. No, I love the game, but I hate the player. <laughs> Literally, I love Don't Yahtzee. hate the game, hate the player. I, I like Yahtzee. Maybe you should send that back up in case we die. That's a good call. And then roll off this way. Usually they reset them, I thought. Like in Dark Souls. Well, this isn't Dark Souls. This is Elden Ring. I'm sorry, I forgot. This isn't Dark Souls. This is Dork Souls. <laughs> is this where you came? Or where no, you... no, no. I took a shortcut, but you do have to... In here? Well, why don't you grab that? I took a shortcut that was not this way. Um, okay. Like, I had rolled off of the... Like here? Sure, go that way. I had rolled off the elevator early. Oh, oh, I see. So I think that I gave you bad advice. Much like the Treaty of Versailles to Germany. Okay. <laughs> nice historical reference there. Thank you. And I also screwed uh, you by having you go send that back up. It's triangle. I know. You can kill the dog easy. The dogs are no problem. Maybe for other people. <clears throat> okay. Now I have to okay. go up. <laughs> and then I have to barrel roll off. Right? Yeah, that way. Okay. I believe. I think. Maybe it's the other way. Was it that? I don't know. Try going back down and turning around. Okay. Right there. 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 Oh no, oh no. Jeez. Remember, you can jump in this game, so that might actually be helpful. And which way did you go? Left, right? I don't remember. Just go right. Go left. Go right. Go alt right? No, don't do that. Okay. okay, well, this is an item we need anyway. Glimmerstone crap or whatever. What is. What are those? <laughs> I don't know. I got like upset there. That'll always be like ironically funny, but not that funny. That is in at Black all. Panther. Yeah. And then did you jump off the edge, too? Uh, no, I went all the way down. Okay. I, although there is a spot oh, no. Oh, to no. jump off the edge here, I think. Oh, no. You could try jumping off this, like, towards that thing. Okay. It's behind you. Right there. Oh, well, that's okay. Oh, oh no, you oh, just no. screwed yourself. Okay, let's try it again. Wait, do you have to leave? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to just do it next time? Sure. Okay. 